Wales, Persia, by Jerry Payton. Phonograph Cylinder 3, Vanity Fire. Persons wake at the crack of dawn, and it took me some time to adjust to their habits. Much like a mountain gorilla, spent from rutting, I would sleep through all surrounding activity, only rising when I could be bothered. However, one morning I received a rude awakening. What is that infernal racket, Habib? There's a dervish in the yard. Is that its mating call? A dervish isn't an animal, Dr. Bell. It, I mean he, is a holy man who's taken a vow of poverty. Pity it wasn't a vow of silence. He's announcing his presence and pitching a tent. But what if he makes a mess? I'm trying to cultivate a croquet lawn in that corner. I can see why you British rule the world. Hitting a ball with a wooden mallet. Genius. It's not as simple as that. There are hoops involved. The wonders of the modern world. Anyway, you should feel honoured. Him being here demonstrates your high status. I'd be more honoured if his appearance wasn't so haphazard. He looks like a beggar. He is, sort of. Dervishes rely on charity. In return, they pray for their benefactors. He'll expect to be fed and watered. I thought you said he wasn't an animal. He'll also require a few coins. I've got thrappany bits in my bag. No wonder you walk funny. Never mind, I've got something for him. A bucket of pebbles. Are these stones valuable to him? No. I take one thus. Open the door thus. Then throw it as hard as I can in his direction. Thus. Oh, what have you done, Habib? You've hit him on the arm. He's not a real dervish. How can you tell? By his headwear. It should display religious text. His hat appears to have writing on it. Yeah, but in his case it reads, Kiss me quick. Someone's played a joke on him. He obviously can't read. So he's hardly going to have great spiritual knowledge. More like great carnal knowledge with that inscription. There's a clothing store in the bazaar called Top Dervish. Every charlatan in town gets kitted out there this time of year. Plus they load up on those lucky charms they sell. Lucky charms? Do they work? Well, he's not so lucky. He's just been hit by a stone. Look, even if he is a charlatan, we should pity him, not punish him. After all, the good book says, Let him that is among you without sin cast the first stone. Bit light for that, I'm afraid. In any case, I am without sin when it comes to squeezing money from people. And for that, he deserves a second stone. Oh! Habib, stop that at once. He's moved out of range anyway. We may not have got rid of him, but at least the trumpeting has stopped. Now what's he doing? He's engaged in religious contemplation under the tree. Or taking a nap, as you or I would call it. Is he still out there? You have to expect this sort of thing round New Year. Isn't it a bit late for New Year? In Persia, it coincides with the beginning of spring. It's an astrological thing. Equinox. No, it's true. Anyway, what with it being spring? I cleaned the house earlier this morning, but things look now different. I banged those two cushions together to rid them of dust. Of course. How could I have missed that? A good tidy is symbolic of a fresh start. There's not much hope for us then. The state of this place. And a fresh start is appropriate, because spring is the time of year when the body is invigorated. Yes, our dervish looks raring to go. Perhaps it's like a cushion for his head. They've just been plumped from what I gather. I've also organised special food for you over the next few days. Oh, what will I be having? The usual, but with a dried apricot for afters. you spoil me, Habib. Any other treats? On Tuesday evening, we'll be jumping through fire. Of course we will. The usual Tuesday evening walk, followed by a slow, painful death by burning. It's not like that, Dr. Bell. We jump through fire to purify the body. Baptism by fire, metaphorically and literally. I don't see how jumping over a smoky dung fire is going to purify us. Dung? Only the best timber is good enough for us Zoroastrians. But to be proper, it has to be dry wood. And I'm not sure that's going to be possible. How come? The place that sells firewood burnt down. The timber yard in Hamadan. Yes, that was a huge fire. 
Now the adjoining shop. It dealt in offcuts and shavings. Two businesses burned to the ground in one day. What are the chances of that? I was thinking about our problem. Can't we scavenge wood locally? Look around you, Dr Bell. The landscape is barren, apart from your croquet lawn. It is rather good, isn't it? Oh, we have a fruit trees which sustain us. We can hardly chop them down. What about bushes? They're somewhat of a rarity in Persia, on account of everyone shaving down below. No, I meant a burning bush. It would be very biblical. It'd be very painful. But if you mean the bushes at the far end of the yard, they remain. Like I said, we need the fruit. Then how about the dying tree next to them? The wood's too green. Like some of the branches are dried out. We could snap them off if you give me a hand. Very well, though I can't stand any more horn blowing, so we'll need to tread quietly. We don't want to wake our dervish. No chance of that. He's sleeping like a log. If only he were a log, we could use him for our fire. Do you think he'll stay the course? Put it like this. If he keeps doing his business in that corner, you're not going to be playing much croquet. No, stay the course, not stain. Oh, the longer you leave it, the more likely it is he'll accept his payoff. And we might as well have a bit of fun in the meantime. Hence the beggar's bullets. Sorry, the bucket of stones to keep him at bay. They minimise his impact on us. While their impact on him is considerable. That first stone left a nasty mark on his arm. Look, he shot. Not for him. It was. I was aiming for his head. Though had he been a real dervish, I wouldn't have done it. Too much respect for their order. It's more a case of self-preservation. They're all peace and love on the outside. But if anyone who's got genuine conviction and you're asking for a kicking, can't we get Amjad to move him on? Amjad may be six foot three, but he's a sensitive soul deep down. He likes poetry, pressing wildflowers, long walks beside the stream. Yesterday I saw him stamping on a sheep's head. To put it out of its misery, no doubt. An act of mercy. There was nothing wrong with it. And he used both feet. We all have our off days. No matter. Even when a dervish is a rogue, people will tolerate him for fear of retribution. From God? From the beggars' union? There's a union for beggars? More or less. If we don't play by the rules, every vagabond in town will make our lives a misery. Sabotage? No thanks. I don't go in for French toiletries. If what you were saying earlier is true, then we shouldn't have aggravated the dervish by throwing stones. It's all part of the game, Dr. Bell. Call it... Negotiations. Salam, Saib. Oh no, we've woken him. Just ignore him. Salam, Saib. I don't speak your language, I'm afraid. Salam, Saib. Look. Go to blazes. Go to blazes. Come on, let's get on with snapping these branches. <coughs> Crikey. Oh, he's like a baby crying for attention. I'll offer him some soup. That should shut him up. Pass me that branch. I've thought of a quicker method. Unfortunately, the soup only pacified our dervish for a short while. Much like a hussy's parlour packed with waiting sailors. The horn blowing continued all day and all night. My nerves were shattered. And, as with the aforementioned sailors, a nasty surprise awaited me in the morning. Habib, a dog has been in the yard. I doubt it. We Persians aren't too keen on dogs. Take a look. There are turds all over the place. Ah, I think you'll find those are the work of our dervish. My grief. What's got into the man? I'm more concerned with what's come out of him. I'm going to have to clean that up. Well, something must have got into him. Yeah, laxatives. I ground some up, then put them in his soup. I've told you before, Habib. Stay out of my medicine cabinet. Some of your pills have made me very happy. Had you grabbed the wrong bottle, you could easily have poisoned him. Most of pity I didn't. Look at the state of the yard. Littered with the devil's kebabs. Enough is enough. Go out there and negotiate. Pay him whatever he wants. Just get rid of him. All right. But only on condition I can have more of those round pills from your cabinet. The unadulterated chocolate bonbons. So they're not medicinal. Couldn't you taste the sugar? I thought they were suppositories. And so it was that Habib handed over a handsome sum to induce our dervish to move on. Like quietly breaking wind in a reverberant church. 
The silence that followed was greatly appreciated. Though my visit from Captain Roger the following morning was less appreciated. Oh, not again. Your dervish is back. Really? How perceptive of you, Roger. Habib, do you know anything about this? By the look of things, it's Prince Ferox doing. What makes you say that? The all night's bed the dervish is lying on. Take a look. It belongs to the prince. His prized possession, carved in India. It obviously cost a princely amount, so we have to assume you're correct. Why would Prince Farrakh do such a thing, spite? He's obviously told the dervish to camp here. He who pays the piper calls the tune. Can't you call a different tune? This one's monotonous. You and the prince didn't exactly hit it off, Dr. Bell. He's a reasonable man. If you get on the wrong side of him and there's the devil to pay. Or the dervish in this case. So we should offer him extra money to move on? The prince will always pay more. Clearly he's got a flea in his ear. And consequently I've got a horn in mine. Blasted dervish. Every time I look out the window he sounds his horn. Observe. I step forward. And back. And forward. Right, I'm going to have a word with him. You can't do that, Bell. He doesn't look violent. I'm sure we can come to some agreement. Oh, you literally can't have a word with him. You don't speak Farsi. I sat a while with the dervish, who was perfectly at ease in my company. Through smiles and hand gestures, I conveyed to him the distress caused by his incessant horn blowing. And through hand gestures of a different kind, he made it very clear that I could go to blazes. Nevertheless, we seemed to reach an understanding. Eventually. Well, that seems to have settled matters. Having discussed things over a cup of, um, bang, I think he called it, our dervish seems greatly pacified. I'm not surprised. Bang is tea made from hemp. Really? Dervishes use it to reach an altered stice, to be close to God, to be close to passing out more like. Look at them. It's obviously been ticking bang all night. Why is it called that? On account of what it does to your head? Bang. Nonsense. I feel perfectly fine. Just wait. You'll see. I only had a sip. I doubt it'll produce the slightest effect. Oh, good. Sandra to show our devotion. The wrists of the brave and the free will move back and forth with quick motion at night when we're thinking of thee. You'll do yourself an injury dancing like that. Sit down, man. Habib, I'm ravenous. I could murder a kebab. Oh dear, I'm not feeling well. Jack to Bell. Jack to Bell. Put him to bed. Roger departed, leaving me in the capable hands of her bib. The combination of bang and deprivation of sleep meant that I was unconscious for 24 hours. Although a regrettable episode, upon waking, I felt bally marvellous. You've got a bit of a sweat on. I've been splitting logs. You should eat more figs. I see that our dervish has gone. I knew our little tete tete would work. Oh, it wasn't that. He was attacked by a leopard during the night. What? Is that common? Virtually unheard of. The leopard tried to mate with the dervish's fur coat, whilst the dervish was still wearing it. Did he die in the assault? No, he scared the animal off by ramming a bag of charms in its mouth. Hmm, so they are lucky. Not that lucky. His back received some nasty claw marks. Amja took him to a barber surgeon in town to see to his wounds. Well, I don't think he was after the haircut. Will our dervish return? No, and neither will any other beggar once word gets around about the leopard. Yes, an unrestrained cat on the prowl. Very unrestrained if its droppings are anything to go by. Actually, that might have been the dervish. But aren't we in danger? Only have been found out. The prince tracked and shot the beast, so we're quite safe. But we're keeping quiet about that. The leopard from hell story works to our advantage. There's nothing like a bit of subterfuge.
What is it with you in French toiletries? At least the matter is settled. No more dervish. The prince is a vengeful man. This business isn't over. But for the moment, we have to prepare for our fire jump. I'll start by writing my will. Habib, I'm a bit anxious about jumping through flames. There's nothing to worry about, Dr. Bell. It'll be a small fire, and hardly anyone dies. A few nasty burns, perhaps. But rarely death. I still don't fancy it. I I've got a poorly knee. Last year, in Hamadan, the Russian ambassador joined in. Well, then, I suppose I should. He clearly survived intact. No, he tripped on a log, went headfirst into the flames, and was scarred for life. For life? Not as bad as he sounds. His burns were barely visible? No, he didn't live much longer. Barely lasted a week. What exactly is the purpose of the ceremony? I still don't understand the significance of the fire. Fire cleanses. Jumping through it protects us against disease. As the flames lick at our feet, we shout, May my ill health be yours, and your warm glow be mine. Patients often shout that at me, usually when I present them with the bill. When will the ceremony start? This evening. Though it's not a ceremony as such, so I dress casual. Er, uh, nothing too flammable or loose, mind. As darkness fell, we prepared our fire. But much like my aged Labrador's blanket, it was unacceptably damp. As were my spirits when Prince Farouk turned up. Tuh. Your ears are burning more than that fire. You're not angry about anything, are you, Dr. Bell? Good evening, Prince Farouk. And what may I do for you? I've come to collect my bed. They'll need a hand shifting it. Amjad's not back yet. You've got a damn nerve asking for our help after what you did. Your bed's over there. It hasn't been made, but nonetheless you can go lie in it. May I remind you, Dr. Bell, that I am your employer. I have to get by on my salary from the telegraph department. You don't pay me anything. Other than a total lack of respect. Dr. Bell, it's coming up to New Year. It's a token of goodwill we should help the prince. Perhaps the two of you could start afresh. What better time? Uh, very well. I just need to attend to the fire. Hopefully this bag of tinder will liven things up. Seems to be making it worse. <coughs> Nothing but smoke. I recognise that smell. It's bang. I think you're right. <coughs> I don't know why I'm sniffing it. I don't even know what bang smells like. <coughs> like, like that. Where did you get this bag of tinder, Dr. Bell? I, I found it amongst the dervish's belongings. <coughs> you imbecile. It's his reserve of bang. <coughs> Not to worry, I, we've barely inhaled any smoke. I doubt it'll produce the slightest effect. Ahem. Oh, good. Chandra to show our devotion. The rich of the brave and the free. We'll move back and forth with quick motion. At night when we're thinking of thee. Aye, Dr. Bell, your fire is useless. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm starving. Not to worry. I brought some kebabs. They'll be cold by now, though. A cold kebab I willingly grab. Mmm, delicious. Very tasty. Well done, Habib. But what are we going to do about the fire? There's no way we can jump that. Absolutely. I can't even stand at the moment. No, I mean, there's barely any flame. And what there is has been polluted by bang. I'm afraid the best I can do is set off some fireworks. Fireworks? What for fun? This rocket will do for starters. It's tilting, Habib. I'll just adjust it. Oh, too late. Drat, he's caught in the canopy of your bed, Prince Farrakh. Wow. Those flames came out of nowhere. That bed is priceless. I had it transported all the way from India. Someone do something, put it out. I'm sorry, Prince Rock, but I don't think I can stand at the moment. Me neither. My legs have stopped working. In fact, you could say they've gone out with a bang. Get it? Out with a bang? Or, or a bit of bang in this case. Ha 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 ha! 
Aye, I can smell burning sandalwood. Are your shoes too close to the fire? Not the wood of sandal, sandalwood. It's highly aromatic, revered in my religion. We offer it to our eternal flame at temple. I once gave wood to an old flame. Your nose is correct, Abib. The bed's made from Indian sandalwood. Of course it is. How did I miss that? I couldn't see the wood for the trees. Or in this case, for the bed. I'm going to jump it. Help me up. I can't move a bit. Faith will move mountains, Dr. Bell. That's as may be, but it won't move my legs at the moment. Besides, you'd be a fool to attempt the jump. That fire is ferocious. What have the posts is fallen? It's only got a small flame. I'll jump that. Wish me luck. May my ill health be yours and your warm glow be mine. Hop. Bravo. Your turn, Dr. Bell. Then you, Prince Verloc. Perhaps later, Habib. I still don't have the use of my legs. Me neither. But well done, Habib. And Happy New Year, everyone. It's not quite New Year, Dr. Bell. But nonetheless, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Now, who's for another leopard meat kebab? What? Bell's Persia was produced and performed by me, Jerry Payton. If you need to contact me, email bellspersia at gmail.com. Or one word, just leave out the apostrophe. And you can follow me on Twitter at bell underscore persia.